Hi, this is Gary Auden, and I'm bringing you an Educast, Flexible Audio Technology. And with me today is Revo Labs, and we're both big talking about creating versatility in audio conferencing, not just simply doing the audio call. With me today is Holger Stoltz, Senior Product Manager, Revo Labs, and myself. And let's talk about what we're going to talk about today. And I think one of the points you really have to think about is when you want a flexible audio conferencing solution, you have to change what you do with a number of people. You have to change it based on the purpose. You have to change it in the location you're at. So the versatility becomes real important. Can I deal with a product that gives me those kind of capabilities? So the subjects we're going to cover today are conferencing challenges, the business case behind conferencing, how do you evaluate the technology, what points do you have to think about with these devices, and you have to keep thinking the word audio, audio, audio. We're going to look at four room layouts, what kind of connection technologies you ought to have, discussing room arrangements, and a post setup checklist. Now let's start off with the first slide, Holger, and talk about the case for conference rooms and why you need such flexibility. Um, thanks, Gary. Uh, it's conference rooms and conference meetings are changing in uh, today's environment. Uh, it gets more and more that people are just moving into a room, um, bringing their own device, uh, whether it's a personal or the device which the company provided to them, um, and just set up a conference, a telephone conference, uh, uh, a Skype conference, a video conference, um, ad hoc. Um, from their device and their, from their computer, and they need to just be able to plug something in in that room um, to allow for that for the for the device to run the meeting. Um, other uh, challenges which people are seeing is like larger groups or larger rooms. How do I cover a larger room with uh, audio devices with microphones to actually hear what everybody is saying as well as with speakers which are loud enough to uh, um, present the far side loud enough for the for the room. What I find, though, from what you're saying is any room can be a conference room today. In other words, people are not necessarily dedicating conference rooms to this technology. Is that correct? That's correct. It's, uh, if you look at the architecture of newer buildings, office buildings, you will find that uh, the employees are working in open office spaces, cubicles, or really open spaces. Um, and then there's a lot of different small to medium to large size conference rooms. And people just step into these rooms um, based on their needs. Is it just two people? Is it four people? Is it 12 people? Um, they just uh, use one of these rooms, again, bring the device, and start the conferences in there. Well, let's talk about some of the business issues behind conferencing. It's uh, The question is, as I just said, you have the rooms which are just for two people or four people, and then you have the rooms which are for 16 people or even larger. Um, what kind of technology do you bring in to these rooms um, that actually works in the small room as, lo as well as in the large room? Because it's important that your employees, when they get into the room, know immediately how to use the technology. You cannot ha not have different technologies in all of these different rooms. You want to have one technology uh, which you can reuse in the different rooms and just which, which adapts to the size of the room. Um, and that's actually something which we see more and more. Um, in the past, that was easy. The companies only had two or three conference rooms, and they had no problem to spend any amount of money on these rooms. Today, it's very important for them to have a lot of conference rooms and then not spend that much money on each of these rooms. Now, one of the points that I found when looking at some of your material is that there are really major points for the evaluation of audio technology uh, that not everyone thinks about. That's, that, that is correct. I think uh, uh, one of the things which we, of course, here at Revo Labs say is that um, you can have a video call uh, without video, but you cannot have a video call without audio. Um, the audio is really the most important part to our, to our communication. Um, and to get best audio, there are several technologies which help you with um, reducing the noise, uh, making sure that there's no echo coming back. Um, today, uh, unfortunately, a lot of companies build these, what we call a fishbowl, a lot of uh, glass walls around uh, with, which have a lot of echo inside. You need to have very, very good um, acoustic equipment in these rooms to actually be able to, to get good audio pickup without creating echo at the same time. Um, that's why it's very important to look at, at uh, good audio technology 
for your meeting rooms. I'd like to add one more thing to this list, a sixth one. How do you track multiple microphones? Isn't that also important? It's a uh, multiple speaker in, in the room, absolutely. It's uh, uh, when you have several microphones in the room and uh, you have the people um, sitting in different areas, you absolutely want to know uh, which microphone uh, is closest to that person. Um, and that is for, for different reasons. You might want to use that for your application, um, tracking really with video cameras, as well as uh, just being able to to work with that audio specifically. I know that that microphone is closest to that speaker, so now I know how to how to manage and how to work on that audio to make it sound the best. We're talking about rooms. Can you delve into the question of how do we arrange rooms and what's important in the rooms? Um, if there would be one answer for everybody, that would be great, but uh, um, it really depends on the use case um, and uh, the size of the room, of course. Um, you will find that uh, depending on training rooms, you have these lines of tables which are facing the front. Um, group discussions, you often have these uh, horseshoe-shaped um, tables in the room. Um, smaller rooms, you get into the square or, or circle rooms, um, or even sometimes in these very small rooms, just a table against the wall, so there aren't even people sitting on all four sides of the table. Um, it really depends on the use case for the for for that specific room, or even for that specific meeting at a time, and you need to be able to adjust the audio for that specific setup at that specific time. I'd like you to go back over the point at the bottom. Simple, intuitive. Is it that IT is setting these conferences up, or we're we now expecting the users to set it up? Um, IT would not be happy if they have to set up the conference room each and every time somebody comes in. Um, of course, there, there are important meetings where IT does come in and does the work beforehand, but very often it's really the user who has to do it themselves. Um, you come into the room, it is your meeting, you want it in a specific way, you have to be able to set it up. And that's why it is very important that it is intuitive from, uh, from the interface. Um, that I know immediately what the different pieces are or the different components of the technology. And I know which button to press, which connector to use. Um, and I don't need to call IT to help me with that. Let's start talking about actual configuring rooms and start off with the very smallest, a single microphone in a small room. What's important there? It's, uh, I, I think the most important thing there is um, Number one, look at the use case. So what are you using the room for? Um, based on that, you will define on where you put the speaker um, and uh, where the audio is coming from. Then from the mic point of view, simply you have to make sure that you use the mic uh, which covers the room and which covers the people um, who you want to listen to. Um, it doesn't help you if you have one mic which is uh, 15 feet away from you uh, because that mic now suddenly has to work very hard to uh, grab the audio um, use gain algorithms to get it up, but when you do that, you automatically also gain up all of the other noise which is in the room. So you want actually microphones as close as possible to the participants. So in our picture here, we say, look at around uh, three meters, uh, nine to 10 feet um, distance uh, max to the, to the microphone, and then you actually have best audio pickup by, uh, from, from the microphone. So let's make the meeting a little bit larger and add a second microphone. What happens now? Um, so number one, of course, you, you increase the number of people which you can cover now. So it's a larger area which you can cover. Um, but now is these things which we discussed beforehand of, of where, where is the speaker which is talking. So which is the microphone closest to him? Which microphone should I, as, a, as an audio device, now focus on um, to use as an input? These are things which now come into, into, uh, into play here. Um, I didn't talk about echo cancellation, as I said before, that is very important because you have the speaker at the front of the room which is playing the sound from the far end. You don't want the microphones to pick that up. Um, now you can't stop the microphones from picking it up. You need to make sure that whatever the microphone picks up and which comes from the speaker is being removed from whatever goes back to the far end. So there's a lot of technology things which come into play now. It seems, though, that as we go on to even three microphones, it's very much the same kind of considerations, except it's a bigger area. Exactly, exactly. You just now look at um, how do I cover the area which I want to cover? How do I make sure that everybody is within that, that circle uh, which we drew there around the microphones um, and that they are covered by, by at least one of the microphones?
And now let's get to the largest room, which really kind of looks more like a classroom than anything else. That's uh, a classroom or, um, as I said, team meetings, um, discussions where, where you have uh, larger board meetings. Uh, where people are sitting around uh, a, a large circle, or in this case, uh, um, the horseshoe, um, and really want to look into each other's face, but discussing it, and want the audio to be captured, either for people on the far end or just for recording purposes. Now the question becomes, how do I place microphones around this kind of shape, which becomes very, it's no longer really a, a, an, easy, an easy decision um, if I have only one microphone, or if I have only two microphones, where to place them. Um, that's where it really becomes important that I have enough, in this case five microphones, to really cover the whole room and all of the seats. We've been talking about the arrangements. Now let's talk about buying this stuff. It's a, it's a question at the end of the day, um, what is the application that I want to use and what is the room size which I have? Um, if it is a small room, I don't need five microphones. Actually, five microphones would be an overkill and then over micing the room. Um, so that's the first thing which I should look at. So what's the size of the room? How many microphones do I, do I need? Then the second becomes really with uh, the, the audio in the room. So um, do I have glass walls? Um, do I have uh, concrete floors or wood floors? Um, so how bad is my echo? How bad is the reverberation in the room? Um, and I need to make sure that the product which I'm buying can actually handle that. Um, audio performance, half duplex versus full duplex, that goes into the echo cancellation. Um, in the past, a lot of products were really half duplex, meaning that while I was talking and you were trying to, to barge in and, and talk over me, it would not be possible to do that because my speakers were more or less like shut down while my microphones were, were capturing my audio. And you really want an application or a product which is, supports full duplex so that you actually can really have a discussion even over a video conference or an audio conference and the distance which is between you and, and the people on the far end. Um, and then the interface. It really depends on what are you using, what kind of applications are you using. If you expect people to come in with their laptop and their tablets, no question, you need USB audio. If you expect people to use their cell phones, Bluetooth is a way to go. If you have a video codec installed in the room, audio line in and analog audio in and out is what you need to, need to, need to use. So it really depends on what's the size of the room, what is the use case, and what is the acoustic um, specification of that room. I think this next slide is a good illustration of what you've been talking about. And I think the important point is you need a product which can do all of these rather than just one of these. Is that correct? That, that is correct because these, these rooms, as we said at the beginning, they become multi-purpose rooms uh, today. Uh, it's me coming in. It is uh, a colleague of me coming in. It might be if it's a larger room, it's a board, board meeting which is happening there. And the equipment in the room needs to be able to work in all of these environments with all of these different use cases, with all of these different devices which might be brought in into, into the room. So in that specific case, you see that the device actually is able to connect over USB with a PC, over Bluetooth to a smartphone, or over analog audio directly to uh, a video codec in the, in the room. And then you can use the communication channels behind that for the conference which, which is going on. Now let's assume we've set up the room. You've provided a very nice checklist here of things to go through as a post setup checklist. Um, that's correct. I think what is very important for people is, uh, uh, number one, make sure that the audio is good. Um, we, we talk about audio fatigue. Um, if your audio is not good in the room, um, if you're listening to bad audio, your brain is working very hard. If you, have, you might have experienced that in the past, that you come out of a meeting and you're really drained because you, your brain was working the whole time to understand what is, was being said on the far end, and it really had something to do with bad audio on your side or on their side. So make sure that both close and, uh, and far end audio is perfect. Um, making sure that it's easy to use. So anybody coming into the room should be able to start a conference within, we're putting down here, two minutes. Um, it should really be plug and play. You plug it in, you're done. And it's easy for me to understand. There's only one or two buttons on it and they're clearly marked and I know immediately what these buttons mean. 
um, goes into audio then is the audio active or is the audio muted so simply make sure that there is uh, indicators on that um, different platforms we just talked about that it really depends on everybody's coming in with their device you need to be able to talk and, and work with each of these of these devices and then really make sure that um, the audio quality is good um, noise cancellation echo cancellation uh, game control somebody has has a, a weaker voice or sitting a little bit further back from the microphone you want actually to him to be understood him or her to be understood on the far end uh, in the same way meaning that you actually automatically have to gain the audio which you which you capture there um, so it's really a lot of things which you have to look at um, but I think it's it's if you go by this list um, you will find the, the most important features of the product now you're from Revo Labs. Where does Revo Labs fit in this community? Um, Revo Labs, of course, is a is a provider of audio solutions. Um, we have been in the market for around ten years. Um, have uh, provided both audio equipment for uh, large scale enterprise um, kind of applications, the boardrooms, um, as well as for unified communications, um, small room, smaller size rooms. Um, exactly going with that bring your own device kind of, of environment. Um, we are uh, the world's largest producer of IP based um, conference phones, um, actually manufacturing for some of uh, some other vendors in, in the world, um, the conference phones. And uh, one of our things which we are being used for is hear every word. Um, we always took a lot of pride and a lot of effort putting into it to get the best audio capture and provide the best audio in our systems. Um, and we are headquartered here in Sudbury, Massachusetts. That is our, our world headquarter. Now, you have a product, the YVC1000. Does this satisfy the requirements you've just been talking about? It does. Um, the YVC1000 really is uh, a device which um, offers the three connectivities which we're talking about, so uh, USB connectivity, Bluetooth connectivity, as well as analog audio in and out. Um, it's very easy to install in a room, um, so for an IT person or for a, for a technical person, very easy to install and very easy to use afterwards. Um, because if I'm coming into the, into the conference room and I need to use the conference room, um, I can do easy Bluetooth pairing so that I can use my cell phone. I can just plug in over USB uh, my laptop or my tablet, and now I can use this uh, for my for my video conferencing or audio conferencing, which uses my laptop or um, tablet. And it has the audio in and out to connect to an existing uh, video codec. The most important thing here, however, is the scalability. Um, so the system itself comes with one microphone part. Um, but it actually can be expanded to up to five microphone parts, which now actually allow you to cover these larger rooms. And that allows you to put this product into a two, four, six person conference room, as well as into the 20, 25, 30 people conference rooms, uh, which we saw on, the, on these earlier um, graphics. Now, don't go away, listeners. I want to point out there's a very good white paper, keeping the conversation going, seven tips for great conferencing spaces. We also have some contact information. You can contact Holter directly. But here's the point at the end that I think is important. You could be winning one a t-shirt or one of these pieces of gear as a viewer of this uh, Educast. Thank you very much for your time, Holter. Okay. Thank you, Gary.